Are you or someone you know having cataract surgery? Here's everything you need to know. Whether you're about to have cataract surgery or have been diagnosed with cataracts but do not yet need surgery or are just wondering if you have cataracts, this is the video for you. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Audrey Tai, board certified and fellowship trained cataract and refractive surgeon, ophthalmologist and cornea specialist. Welcome to my channel, Eye Channel by Eye Surgeon. I'm here to bring you the latest information on eye health and medicine. In today's video, I'll review what are cataracts and when do you need cataract surgery, as well as what to expect before, during, and after cataract surgery, and the risks of the surgery. So what are cataracts? Cataracts are the aging changes that happen to the crystalline lens of our eyes. If you imagine the eyes are built like a camera, this crystalline lens in our eyes functions like the lens of a camera. It has refractive power to focus light rays onto the retina to form clear images, just like the film that's used in a conventional camera. The crystalline lens is made most of water and proteins. When we're young, the lens is transparent due to the orderly arrangement of the protein fibers in that lens. Those proteins are called crystallines. As we age, the accumulation of oxidative stress causes cross-linking of the lens proteins, resulting in progressive clouding and loss of transparency, as well as increased stiffness of the lens. And this process eventually forms cataracts. How do you know if you have cataracts? Because cataract formation results in the loss of transparency of our natural crystalline lens. The most common symptoms of cataracts are blurry vision and increased glare with bright lights. Usually, people notice a gradual decrease in the overall clarity of their vision over time, which affects viewing things far away as well as up close. For example, you may find yourself needing more and more light when reading a book or having a harder time seeing the road signs when driving. The symptoms of increased glare are typically seen during night driving. People with cataracts often notice progressive difficulty with nighttime driving. The bright lights from oncoming traffic seem more and more blinding. In people who have advanced cataracts, even regular sunlight can be very bothersome. So if you notice those symptoms, you may be developing cataracts. If you would like to learn more about how to prevent and delay progression of cataracts, you can check out this video, 5 Tips to Prevent Cataracts. Most of the time, when we think about cataracts, we think it is a disease that exclusively affects elderly people. But that's not always the case. Typically, cataract starts developing around age of 40. By age 80, more than 70% of people develop visually significant cataracts. By 2050, the number of people in the US have cataracts is expected to double, from 24.4 million to about 50 million. It is true that the most common form of cataracts is age-related. But this is not to say that people younger than 40 do not develop cataracts. As a cataract surgeon, I've removed cataracts in people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and older. So when do you need cataract surgery? Ophthalmologists typically recommend cataract surgery when you notice that your vision is blurry, even with new glasses or contact lenses, or when you're having trouble seeing objects clearly with regular day-to-day -day tasks like driving, reading, or playing sports, or if you're having trouble with night vision. For example, starting to avoid nighttime driving due to blurry vision or significant glare from oncoming headlights. So if you notice any of those symptoms, I would recommend you get a full dilated eye exam with a qualified eye doctor to evaluate the size of your cataracts and see if cataract surgery is right for you. And of course, there are other eye diseases such as macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, etc., that can cause blurred vision. Therefore, a regular full eye exam at least once a year is what I recommend for all of my patients. What should you expect before you have cataract surgery? For all of my patients, before scheduling cataract surgery, I typically perform a dilated eye exam. A full cataract surgery evaluation with me usually involves measuring the curvature and length of the eye. A full eye exam with pupil dilation 
and examining the health of the optic nerve and retina inside of the eye. Also, the strength of your glasses prescription for both distance and near vision will be recorded during the exam. Contact lenses can temporarily change the eye curvature and affect the accuracy of the curvature of the eye measured during the exam. This can affect accuracy of the implant chosen for the eye and it can ultimately affect the vision outcome after cataract surgery. For this reason, I give each of my patients specific instructions regarding discontinuing contact lenses wear for a period of time prior to their visit. For people who wear regular soft contact lenses, I typically ask them to be out of contact lenses for five to seven days prior to the visit. For toric soft contact lenses, I require patients to be out of contact lenses for two weeks. And for hard contact lenses, I will give each of my patients a customized contact lens discontinuation schedule. This is why it is important to bring your current glasses and contact lens prescription with you for your cataract evaluation visit. It is also very important to bring your records with you if you have had any refractive surgery, such as LASIK, PRK, radiokeratotomy, also known as RK surgery, or any other prior eye surgeries. Refractive surgery changes the shape of the eye, and this can affect the accuracy of the measurements of your eye curvature and affect your vision after cataract surgery. Also, please do not forget to bring a list of all of the medications that you are taking to your cataract evaluation as well. After the examination and testing, if you are a candidate for cataract surgery, I will go over the testing results and implant choices, surgical steps, as well as surgical risks with you before scheduling you for cataract surgery. We will formulate an individualized surgical plan for you to fit your personal vision needs. With the advanced technology available for cataract surgery nowadays, I offer my patients femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery, as well as conventional manual cataract surgery. To learn more about the differences between laser assisted cataract surgery and conventional surgery, as well as the steps of cataract surgery, you can check out this video. During cataract surgery, the cloudy crystalline lens is removed and a permanent lens implant is placed in the eye. I offer my patients advanced astigmatism correcting implant as well as presbyopia or reading glasses correcting implants, in addition to basic monofocal implants. To learn more about the differences between each type of implant and to help you choose which implant will work best for you, you can check out this video. And if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. What should you expect on the day of cataract surgery? In the US, cataract surgery is typically done at an outpatient surgery center, and typically only one eye is operated on at a time. The second eye is operated on a different date a few weeks or months after the first eye surgery. If you are having cataract surgery with me, I typically will prescribe you a combination eye drop to start four times a day, two days before the surgery and you will continue to use it for about a month after the surgery. For cataract surgery, patients are typically given conscious sedation anesthesia. Therefore, patients are required to have an empty stomach without food or drink for at least six hours prior to the surgery time to avoid any complication from anesthesia. On the day of the surgery, you'll come to the surgery center and check in for your surgery. Cataract surgery typically takes less than 15 minutes and you will go home the same day You'll be in the surgery center for a few hours, including preoperative care and postoperative recovery. As I mentioned before, during the surgery, patients are typically not under general anesthesia. You will receive IV or local sedatives, but will not be completely asleep. The surgery itself is painless. You'll be in a very relaxed state, but will still be able to follow directions, such as looking up and down. Right after surgery, there will be a clear plastic shield placed over your eye to protect it. After surgery, nurses will give you post-operative instruction before going home, and you will be instructed to keep the shield on overnight, and you can remove it in the morning. I usually instruct my patients to apply their first post-operative dose of the eye drop about four hours after surgery, and apply them two more times before bedtime that evening. You can remove the shield in order to put in eye drops, but tape it back on right after putting the eye drops. 
the plastic shield needs to be maintained over the surgical eye at all time, except when putting eye drops in for the first 24 hours after the surgery. For my patients, I always emphasize that when you hold back your eyelid to put in eye drops, it is very important not to push on the eyeball. Instead, you can lean back on a reclining chair or in your bed to provide your head with support. So you can squeeze the eye drop bottle and let the eye drops fall into the eye with gravity without touching or putting any pressure on the eye. Only one drop is needed to be applied in the eye each time. And how do you care for your eyes after surgery? I always tell my patients, there are three things that are very important not to do one week after surgery. The first one is to never touch the eye. The second one is to not bend down with your head below the level of your heart. And the third one is no heavy lifting for the first week of surgery, especially during the first 24 hours of the surgery. The first week after surgery, I instruct my patients to avoid any strenuous activities such as going to the gym, any competitive sports, including golfing, swimming, etc. You should also not wear any eye makeup or lift any object heavier than 20 pounds, and especially do not rub the eye. I instruct my patients not to get their face wet, including the shower for the first 24 hours after surgery. And afterwards, they can shower, but they need to avoid spraying water straight into the eyes for one week after surgery. The key is that you want to avoid anything, including water, dust, or sweat getting to your eyes. My patients will typically continue the combination eye drops prescribed for one month after surgery, using it four times a day for first week after surgery, three times a day the second week, twice a day the third week, and once a day the fourth week after surgery. If you have any other eye condition, such as diabetic retinopathy, or history of eye inflammation, such as iritis, etc., or a non-routine complex cataract surgery. You may need to use prescription eye drops for more than one month after surgery. What should you expect in terms of vision recovery after cataract surgery? In general, your vision will be blurry on the day of surgery. With a successful cataract surgery, your vision should be much clearer the day after surgery and you should be able to resume most of your visual tasks within a few days after surgery, such as watching TV or light reading. You may feel very mild irritation or foreign body sensation in your eyes, and may have some tearing and light sensitivity for about a week after the surgery. The majority of vision recovery occurs during the first week after surgery, but it is not unusual to experience small fluctuations in your vision during the first month after surgery. Although mild irritation and vision fluctuations are expected shortly after surgery, significant eye pain or sudden significant vision changes are unusual and can be signs of potential serious complications. If you experience those changes or any other concerning symptoms, you should contact your eye surgeon right away. For most cataract surgery patients, their vision stabilizes after about one month after surgery. However, a small percentage of patients may take a few months to fully recover their vision after cataract surgery. Your vision recovery after cataract surgery may be longer if your surgery was complex or if you have any other eye diseases that may interfere with your vision recovery after surgery. Usually, patients will be following up with their eye surgeon or eye doctor a few times during their post-operative period. Please discuss with your eye surgeon what to expect after your cataract surgery during your individual consultation. So what are the risks of cataract surgery? I always tell my patients that cataract surgery is one of the most commonly performed surgeries in the U.S. with one of the highest success rates. In general, for routine cataract surgery, minor complications that do not result in permanent vision loss occur in less than 1% of cases. This includes complications such as infection, bleeding, swelling, retina tears, or retinal detachment, incomplete cataract removal, etc. The complications can be treated with additional medications or surgeries. Serious complications that can result in permanent vision loss occur in between 1 in 10,000 to 100,000 surgeries. Even though cataract surgery is one of the safest surgeries, just like any other eye surgery, the risk of vision loss with cataract surgery is not zero. 
If you have any other eye conditions, such as diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, poorly dilated pupil, etc., or if your cataracts are very dense, your individual surgical risks can be higher. If you need cataract surgery, it is very important for you to have an individual consultation with your eye surgeon to discuss your specific surgical risks. Let me know in the comments below if you or anyone you know had cataract surgery and how was your experience. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have learned anything new, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell. Because if you click that subscribe button, you will help give me the opportunity to continue to bring free videos about eye health and eye surgery to the world. Anytime you don't have 10 minutes, you can watch short fun videos about eye care tips on Instagram at Dr. Audrey Tai. And you can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn to learn more about my practice. I look forward to connecting with you there. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.